Hey everybody, welcome to the Art of Comics. My name is Andres Salazar. I'm here with Ariel Celestino. We're talking about heavy metal, September 1979. This issue's right after the previous one we did uh, just a week ago. Boom. This is next. And uh, right before we recorded, you were telling how damn passionate you are about this. Yeah. Now, this was a foundation of some of your adolescence, your love of art, all that stuff. And I was telling him how a lot of you guys are from the UK and are from Europe. And you guys comment, you talk to me, you want it, you love this stuff because there's not much coverage of this series on YouTube. Yeah, there just ain't. Yeah, it's it, it, and particularly like the early the early years of this yeah. magazine. Like what I was saying before is like this was essentially for me, and I got to believe for a lot of other people, the first introduction into European comics. Yeah, first introduction into more adult based kind of stuff. Yeah. And like, well, what I was just telling Andy was that like, you know, I discovered this right when I was like 13 or 14 years old, you know, right at that adolescent age and it combined all of my interests. Yeah, it, for sure. It, it, for me, <laughs> heavy metal, not just because of the title heavy metal, which heavy metal was had a very different musical connotation mm -hmm. at that time than it does now, mm -hmm. but it, it does incorporate rock and roll type themes in some of the stories mm -hmm. um even this cover right yeah oh um, this cover is super rock and roll <laughs> uh, so it it, it, it uh. sexual situations which for a 13 14 year old boy is like gold like you mm -hmm. know comics like all these things that interested oh, yeah. me it's all a, in one place perfect little melding of all these things and it was so different from american yeah. comics that it blew it yeah. just blew my mind yeah but this cover is great. I'm not even sure who the artist is. But uh, again, is it John maybe, or am I just coming up with that? Or no? Is that a name? L H O N maybe. Plan? Uh, maybe. Or, I, don't I don't know. It'll say on the inside. But very much in the style of like the early '80s yeah. airbrush kind of thing, yeah. stenciled artwork. Yep. I dig. Very it. cool cover. Yeah, I like it a lot. Oh, Olivia! Is this Olivia? This is uh oh, no, Vargas. Yeah, this, this is, is Vargas. Vargas who predates. So, oh, so Olivia was biting off Vargas. Well, Olivia comes from that that I, kind of like who were we talking about before that artist you would just say uh, uh, Tim Br Tim Tim Robert, Robert Oh, oh, oh McGinnis. Robert McGinnis. Yeah, yeah. Like Vargas, you know, that that pinup oh, okay. art tradition. Yeah. But this is a cover from the Cars Candio album, which is huh. a fantastic album. Huh. To another ad for the Alien yeah. comic by uh, you Archie. You said Strinko or no, no, not no, Strinko. Uh, uh, Walt uh, Simonson. Simonson. Yeah, it's Pre great. This stuff. is before Thor. His Thor run then. It's got to be because right? Thor didn't come till like mid '80s or late '80s. Okay, I can't I wonder, remember. I if it's got that style to it, or if it's. I want to get that. Uh, what is this here? This pickup pack. Yeah, zigzags or are these like job, uh, uh, yeah, these are uh, rolling papers. Uh, rolling papers, yeah. Huh. I don't know if jobs are still around even. But like the feathered hair. Yeah, I love that dude. The hair fa fair faucet kind of deal yeah. going on. See who the so, cover was up by? Uh, no. bu bu this is the front cover, cover, Jim Cherry. Oh, yeah. Cherry. His name sounds familiar. He's, Do we know he's, him? He's a guy that became popular in the 80s doing that kind of style. It's okay. very like... Very much in in the style that he works. Ooh, I'm excited. We're gonna get some Gray Morrow. Yeah. Mobius, of course. The Kenneth Smith. Smith we're, gonna get, we're gonna continue that. Hey, we're gonna get some of that. Uh, Boaz doesn't sound familiar. Or Bo Bo's. Uh, some of these. Paul Kirshner. Yeah. Okay, this is gonna be cool. Yeah. Check it out. Well, that's kind of neat too. Is that thirty? Yeah. So the, oh, are these, are these like a note. numbers? Is that what they are? Yeah, the, the issue number. This is, this is issue 30 then. Yeah. Is that right? Because um, okay. it's not printed here. It's, we just get the date. Yeah, you just but, get the but date. I you never get, get the okay. number on it. I think the new ones have numbers on them. No, so the new ones like, are like 285 or they're yeah. like up in the. But they print the number on the cover. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, it's like a little note from the editor. Oh, cool. And, and this. What is this? What, that's a. That's, uh, yeah, man. Introduction by Ellison. So hold on. 
What is this? It's uh, Richard it, Corbin. I know. Is it a comic? It's a comic, man. What uh, the heck is going on here? Hold on just a second. Going in the vault. Oh, snap. Big stack of Corbin stuff. Oh, you suck. It's in here someplace. Oh. Maybe. And I'm just showing off now. Yeah, you are. You, you knew it was the last one. You're just I like, didn't, but it worked out great. So whoa, yeah. It's so uh, same era. It looks like the same era. It's not. Yeah. It's before. You know, he's not doing computer stuff like he does later on. This looks yeah. like. A, this is all his, wow. his sort of like layered. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is like classic. I would think of the orange and the purple. Yeah. Like his, like, that's that's his jam just this right green. here. Yeah, like that. Yeah, so it's an adaptation of uh, Thousand One Nights. Whoa. And uh, oh, look at basically that. Sinbad. What's the, uh, who pump? Oh, the hit Katala. Yeah, this is, this is probably uh, an earlier edition. Huh. Wow. But Catalan is a, a publisher that, that published a lot of his stuff. Oh, that looks great. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Dude, showing off. I love it. I love Richard Corbin. Man. Yeah, dude. He's... Uh, we weren't going to talk about now, it. Now, do you like his... I oh, know, now we're going to talk. Do you like his computer stuff when he like, goes off? Because he makes this thing called, was it Phonetic Press or some kind of a... Fantagore. Fantagore Press. Is that his own like publishing Fantagore thing? is his own self-publishing right. thing. Now, um, he, and he did floppies because I, I have some of those little floppies yeah. of Dan and things. But then uh, he trans he then goes from this style to really kind of looks like computer. Yeah, I, I don't think, know if it's just the coloring or. Yeah, I think it, later on. I, I'm, in, um, I'm not as enthused about. No, it. because it, it it has a different quality to it. But I think yeah. that his work it was so time consuming, and he did so yeah. much of it. Like he's like, got you yeah, know I just showed you a stack was, yeah. of all that stuff that's in that same kind of painted yeah. style. That's a lot of work. Yeah. And. Uh, He'd been doing, you know, he's been working since the late 60s in yeah. comics, you know. So, and a large part of that, like, self-publishing. So, you know, he didn't really start working in mainstream comics till like, what, the early the early 2000s, maybe? Like, when yeah. he started With doing like that Rat Luke God Cage stuff. Luke, oh, Luke, yeah. Rat, Rat God's Rat more recent. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah no, you're right. Luke and Cage. then he started then Magnola. But that was just doing him black and white. He wasn't doing colors. No. It was someone else was coloring. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that leaves out, I mean, there's some time yeah. saved there, of course. Yeah, and I think that he started working more, like, all the Hellboy stuff he did was in that mm -hmm. same kind of vein. Yeah. Which yeah. is, I love that Mignola appreciates his stuff, even though Mignola's stuff is so different from, from what Corbin does. But, yeah. like, you know, even the, his line work is very, you know, there's a lot of cross-hatching and yeah. pointillism and stuff yeah. like that. Things that Mignola does not use in his work. And uh, yeah. that he dug him enough to tap him and, and use this great, yeah. like, in my opinion, ex extremely underused yeah. comic artist, you know. Well, horror, too. I mean, he's like a horror guy. And so... Yeah. You know, I mean, That's I would love jam. to see, like, a Bernie Wrights and Hellboy comic. Yeah. Well, we're not going to see that, yeah. unfortunately. But do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. like, talk about, like, yeah, you know, yeah, the masters if, of horrors, yeah, yeah. you know, get somebody like that. Or, and, and those guys, what, what Corbin and Wrightson have in common is that they really, they did a lot of work in eerie and creepy. Oh, yeah. I I love those. I, that's another series yeah. I want to talk about. Yeah. I have a bunch of, I, I just have the hard covers. You have the I have some of, some of the actual I magazines. got the hard covers, which... I don't know if they're as good or not. I haven't seen the originals. But, I mean, it, the paper's nice. Yeah, yeah. They're and cool. It, I have a look, few of those, too. Good. Um, but, oh, man. Yeah, the I mean, art, there's such dude. great art. Great, a yeah. lot of Gray Morrow in there. A yeah. lot of some Toth in there. Randall, uh, Randall Crandall? Or Randall, uh, Randall Crane. Randall Crane. Um, yeah, just tons uh, of... Uh, yeah. John Severin. Toth. Uh, yeah. you know who Jim Colin. You know who the... Ed Jim yeah. You know who the Colin. editor of that was? For... Uh, who, uh, and yeah. Warren during that that it era was, to the uh, eight. It, it was uh, what's his face? Uh, no. DC guy, the guy who went to DC. No, uh, was uh, Archie, Goodwin was, Archie Goodwin was. Yeah, Archie Goodwin. And then after Archie Goodwin was Louise Jones, who is Louise oh, Simonson. Simonson. So I she know that. she I edited know that. a lot of. She was really? an editor on a lot of uh, creepy and eerie stuff hmm. in the seventies. We don't even we talk about. I would say <laughs> in the video, we I need to put in the description all the topics yeah. we go through because I, we go. 
all over the place. Well, yeah, because this stuff, it's, it's, you yeah. look at this thing and then you it go, oh, yeah, it relates to Louis, something Louis else. Yeah, you, you can get that connection. It's but like, no one knows. People are thinking, oh, we're gonna, they're just going to talk about this damn magazine. Yeah. We actually talk about a lot of comics. I mean, yeah. the whole world. Because it reminds me of stuff that was yeah. out at this time. No, I think it's good. And this is... This is um, I'm not familiar Dan with this O'Bannon. artist. Dan Let's talk about Dan O'Bannon. Dan O'Bannon's another great. The writer of... Alien. Alien. Blade Total Runner. Recall. I don't think he did... He didn't do Blade Runner? No, he did Total Recall. Total Recall. Uh, he was going to do Dune. Oh, he did Dark he, Star. He did like a draft of Dune. He I worked think. on Dark Star with John Carpenter, who was jo okay. John Carpenter's student film that they turned into. Right. And you can find Dark Star on like any yeah. streaming service. It's a really weird, kind of funny science fiction movie yeah um but then what were you just saying i think he did a draft of dune back yeah like well years ago when it was gonna before it became alien you know the okay. story where so jodorowsky, jo jodorowsky yeah. that it's featured prominently he's featured prominently in the jodorowsky's dune yeah. documentary which is great which you know that you whole watch it together have you seen yeah it? that's great it. man you watch it together i love that movie yeah i got it on on blu-ray yeah me too. um but yeah, that whole team, that yeah. whole alien team Basically was got, was formed got taken, from yeah. Jodorowsky's yeah. Uh, Dune. Yeah, Geiger, adventure. everybody. Oh, everybody. He assembled uh, that team and then they went out and made one of the greatest pissed, science fiction movies. But how pissed would you be if you're freaking Jodorowsky and you're like, not only will they not give me money, but we wasted so much time, all those guys moved on to this other project. And then now yeah. you're just like, hose, I'm going to go to Mexico and make a damn El Topo instead. Yeah. Or you know what I mean, like he did El Topo you, already, but or, but, you, or a holy man, whatever. He like, kind of like, quit like, just forget, filmmaking, yeah, forget too, it. I'm for a long go time. Do my own thing, yeah. Or I'm gonna publish my own little stories. Just well, call. I mean, well, the, that's what he did. He actually did he got call. into comics because he, he because had met was, Mobius and right. and they felt like they were like a so match made in heaven. And yeah. read the Inkle. It's the weirdest, most fantastic. Is that how you pronounce it, Inkle? I put in call. I don't know why. You're, you might be right. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce yeah. like. Uh, it's weird. It's a weird comic. I would like to talk about so it So great, man. But it's also not this type of Mobius, too. It's a lot simpler. It's a lot Clear line, cleaner. I guess you would use. Kind of like World of Adina. You know, it's very yeah, yeah. clean, clear lined. It's not as rendered and like. Yeah, work, not cross hatchy and it's stuff. He, he's, he's, he's putting more work. But it's really, it's tight. It's some of his tighter work. Yeah. It's some of his. Uh, he doesn't do a lot of rendering. Even yeah. even though you can tell it's like sort of gouache or watercolor painted. Yeah, it's very stark though. I mean, it's a yeah. blue. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it works. I mean, it works so strong great. Strong colors. But this is this is fantastic. I'm yeah. not really famil familiar with this artist, but I always. I dig I, it. Liked it's very clean. I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's. Really and this is this is, turns out to be they use this little storyline as the opening for the heavy metal movie. Yeah. Or the Which is heavy good. metal animated. Movie. I like that movie. I haven't I haven't seen that movie probably uh, 20 years. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time. It not, probably I, I it might have, it, it might be sucky. It might be like, <laughs> it, might just be like, it is kind of it is kind of sucky I think. <laughs> it's like oh. There's some things that were that, that they did that were really cool but yeah, I'm not a I, I'm not a huge fan of that. Anthology animation. No, no, or... of that particular movie, like I like it, but it's basically because it's tied to this magazine and my memories of this magazine. I'd rather see like Wizards or something. Wizards like is cool too. I love Ra Could Ralph Bakshi. You know I mean? So I like. I'd rather see something like that, which I feels like a complete package of weirdness. Yeah. You know. Um, you should talk, we could talk about Wizard too and yeah, Bon yeah. Day's influence on I, Ralph Bakshi and I like that, that whole kind of thing. I love Bakshi stuff. Yeah, I do too. I, I, I like that a lot. American Pop. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he's a great and I love his Lord of the Rings and all that. Yeah, that stuff. was great too. Very yeah. moody, very, oh. very dark. Because that moody. was the first time, not the first, one of the first like rotoscope like yeah. films where they. Yeah, I even like uh, Fire and Ice, the film he made yeah, with, with, with Frazetta. Frazetta. Yeah. Uh, I watch that every once in a while. I think yeah. that's pretty cool. He was a character too. He's, from what he still I is. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can follow him on Instagram actually. I know a guy who, um, so caps the little artist group here in Burbank uh one of the guys that I met there that that goes he um worked with Bash he's one of his artists uh, in, in the studios for so some many of the films yeah and he said that he was 
sweetest, nicest guy, but also kind of crazy. Like, it yeah. was just, yeah. Erratic, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. nuts. I yeah, mean, he got... Maybe he, bipolar-y, kind of. Yeah. Or just at least moody, maybe a better way to say it. Yeah. I don't know too many people that aren't moody, to tell you the Especially truth. Especially artists, or yeah. traditionally. Um, this is awesome looking. Yeah, what is... Is this photography? This has got to be. Or, or photography with Fumetti. some kind of airbrushed over yeah. it. Yeah, from Eddie. Uh... I'd like to do some stuff on Fumetti, like actual real Fumetti. Yeah. I've got some really well, weird that, that, stuff that, that I got from That term is Argentina. used a lot of ways. Sometimes yeah. it's just used as comics. I think the Italian... it's used... Yeah, go ahead. The actual Italian translation is comics. Yeah. Like, you know, like, well, how would you say in Spanish? Historietas? Yeah. Historietas. But, uh, so, but... I in the way that I'm using it is a comic that's made up of photographs. Photos. Yeah, yeah, that's that's photo another comic. Way. I guess that's another it. way that I've heard it being like that term being kind of used. Um, this is really cool though. Really neat effects. Yeah, airbrush. Yeah, I like that idea of airbrushing photographs. Yeah, Whoa. almost getting an almost negative mm -hmm. photo oh. negative kind of oh, vibe yeah. to it. That looks like a photo that's been airbrushed over. Oh yeah, this is like a weird composited yeah. i mean this is like pre collage. photoshop collage you know <laughs> pre dave uh, mckean yeah dave yeah right yeah dave mckean that's another great guy yeah i like his stuff um even here. these ads are always like interesting and trying yeah. to pick out the artists that they use right? in there these different guys yeah some mobius is, some more mobius another airtight garage episode i love his he always did these really great um kind of crowds just, just to be able to kind of put those all together and layer them so that the you know that they, they fit read. you know and i know some people use like tissue papers like different yeah. layers of tissue paper um what the hell is charlie brown i sweater? don't I know but <laughs> i like great. it i like the, i like those little uh Tissues. we would call it easter eggs you know it's cool great positioning he's just come on what do we can say about this guy um alias what's this I don't know. This is another one, alias. though, right? It's it's not, it's not Mobius, but it's somebody. Let's look it up. What the heck? Yeah, it's it, it's this artist called Alias. Oh, oh, that is the oh. By Alias. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like that. This is very. Eh, it's kind of got some Mobius mm -hmm. kind of vibe to it. Oh wow! It's very, it's it's cool though. Yeah, it's really cool. It's in that same kind of. I like. I mean, that if I if you're just like, okay, mm -hmm. draw this, that take me two weeks. Yeah. Just to like figure out like okay, you know what I mean? How am yeah. I gonna figure this out? And like, what kind of reference do you? What does he look at to kind of get these consoles and yeah. then to get that and, you know, you can't just come up with this. You gotta look at stuff to. You're designing. Figure it you're out. like set design. Yeah. At that right. Point. I mean, I've heard people like building model. I was actually was thinking of building a. a maquette uh, of a figure that uh, for this comic I want to do just to have to kind of light differently and use I know some artists do that they'll like spend Corbin a week that. or two building out with wires and clay and everything Corbin Abe. did that a lot yeah you, you, I think I saw somewhere in one of these or yeah, you told no, me uh, a, how, I've uh, got how this he, Corbin book that he, shows a little bit of his through. process and he he has a couple and, of his maquettes in and there is he that doing he's, that for kind of the, for, for shadows and stuff for yeah you don't know how he yeah. gets that double lighting effect all the yeah, time. Exactly. Like that's he's referencing these, you know. It would be it's like an investment, but there's also like a skill level needed to do that. That I just feel like, you know, I spend two weeks trying to build this thing and then it just looks like ass. <laughs> and yeah. I'm just like, oh, you know. But yeah. I but I'm always t you know I like crafty stuff too. Yeah, it's like sure. an excuse to like do something different, and I could sell it to myself as a tool. Kind of like ripping up all my magazines and putting them in a book. Oh, dude. It's like, <laughs> it's a tool, though. It's a, yeah, it's a project. I, I get it. <laughs> oh, what's this? Grim Harl. Yeah. Color. I've Graham never Harl seen color. Stuff. I've only seen his, you know, his washes and black you know, and white. I think the first stuff. time I may have seen Grey Morrow's work was in an Archie comic. Like, uh, well, Archie Comics would occasionally have things oh, like gosh. The Hood uh -huh. or like their superhero thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, like, in the back of, like, an Archie comic would be, like, uh, a, a six-page 
Hood story, mm -hmm. which Gray Morrow illustrated. Huh. You know, I had no idea, and I didn't know that Buck Rogers was a thing you could just throw down. Well, I is think it kind of own? went into was this uh, a public domain at this it time. It kind of did, but I think that it's huh. like it, it's a big thing right now. I know, I know of one producer that's trying to work, that's trying to get the rights to I love it. I love Buck it. Rogers. This and is cool. It's great. oh, now it'd be perfect because yeah. now there's enough time. We're all old enough yeah. to remember, but but not, I think the rights know. are all tied up somehow in oh, some probably. weird legal thing. So, probably. yeah, this is this is great. Yeah, Gray Morrow too, man. He's great. It, it's a classic. It does style. feel kind of old classic style, but um, a lot of neat, innovative, like you know, coral and different. Oh, I that's mean, neat. I dig it. And she's for a, a guy good. that yeah, for a guy that worked. And he's old. I mean, by now he's got to be in his sixties, right? At this oh, time. Oh, by here, this is right? the early eighties. He's he been was working the, well, like fifties and sixties. Uh, yeah, because the, uh, the Aries were like sixties, right? I think well, mid were mid seventies, mid sixties to. Yeah. Uh, yeah so he's to at least he leaves forties or fifties in here. I would say. Yeah. I would. I would think. I guess. I and he's doing everything. Right, Looks he's like, the yeah, only he guy it, that's yeah, like credited color, on this, so yeah. including the lettering. Which, yeah, you mentioned the lettering. He's not. Oh, he actually, I was gonna say he's not using. He's using kind of like these white bubbly things, but then there's some like that which would never fly nowadays. Yeah, that's just not that great. But or even even like the single line yeah, as. Yeah. A, but he's trying to do his own thing. Yeah. He's got no editor probably yeah. on this. He's, he's probably just doing, just doing this. And Come on. That's cool, man. I dig this a lot. I like this kind of Yeah, it's stuff. great. It's like a space vampire yeah. freakazoid kind of thing. Man. Oh. oh, this guy. Yeah, same guy. Issue. yeah. Someone's blowing up your pager. Yeah. Turn that off. Um I again I can't say more than I said last time, but I like this Kenneth Smith stuff. He it's, um, it's very odd, but it's very like interesting looking. Yeah, I probably if I read the story, I'd have some more thoughts. <laughs> but, Here we but, go. Another thing about lettering and how, um, it's like he's using typewriter. typeset. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, I mean, this doesn't hand done, which is maybe just again the speed choice. Speed or, choice, or and the, then. You know, some of these guys. But may, but maybe been, it makes this feel more organic. Maybe it's also like, let's contrast. make this square. Yeah, let's make this square, robotic, you know, mechanical. Like and this is not system, mechanical yeah. in any way. This is all clouds. That's and, true. You know, so maybe it's just that. I mean, it works. You know? There's some odd little things like like some of this looks a little off register. Right. Like, or, or yeah. Just. Yeah. You know, this particularly. But like, you know, who knows? And then like. The spacing, line spacing is like is not little... even ever, but this is a different size. Yeah, there's different likes. I wonder if this is translated or something. I think the guy's name is, is Kenneth okay. Smith, so yeah. he's he's an Anglo. This is 1978, but we're in 79. That's interesting, too. Yeah. So this is, you know... Re Who knows? Old, this might have been sitting in like or... a submission yeah. pile yeah. that they never got around but to. But then here, that's interesting. 79. January 79. So we go from 80, 78, January 79, and published in 79. September of 79. And it took him a year to do this. Hmm. It's kind of fascinating. Man, he... <laughs> All those dabs doubles. <laughs> oh, so there's the, uh, the Back ad. issues of, like, yeah. you got to the point where they're selling back Dude. issues. Dude. That's what I'm talking about. If only you could time travel back and right? buy them for that price. What is this? It's kind of cool. This is hay. Oh, right. is that? Yeah. Pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Super detailed. Just really seahorse looking mm -hmm. <laughs> robot. What an odd design. Right. That's a lot of what I like about this magazine, too. It's like... I think it's very imaginative. It's, it, I mean... It doesn't I, take the obvious, like, you yeah. know, well, draw a robot. Like, if you yeah. had asked... I mean, it's a great way to just look through these and go, man, these are some cool ideas. Like, just like bizarre things. Yeah, and and 
too, the more you get into it and the more you delve into what was going on in this time period, the more that you see like, oh, they're referencing yeah. something else. Right. That's a good point. That's actually a really good point. Okay. And this, this is, and this this is like kind of a common, Hillbrand. almost every issue or maybe every issue, they do have a kind of a prose piece, which yeah. is kind of nice. So Not you every a issue, extra. but yeah, like but a lot, the, a lot, have, a lot yeah. of, and this happens through, throughout the run. Yeah, I think okay. it even they even do it now to to they a certain might, degree. They might, yeah. it, it may have been replaced with things like artist galleries. Okay, right. But I like I like it though. They do Good non. Stuff. This is awesome too. Like, yeah, what is what this? The hell? I don't even know. What, I don't even know. Is this a comic? Is that I guess it's a comic. Yeah. Mushroom soup. Colors are awesome. Yeah. It's really well, it's neat. like some airbrush, some, yeah. I love that kind of... Isn't that neat? It's really neat. Huh. It's just, it, it's got this great sense of three-dimensional with the, with the shadows. Yeah, and, just really. And just these volumes, you know? It's like a plastic, you know, yeah. little thing. and Just really well done. The color. I like that a lot. Like, almost that... Kind of a Corbin esque mm -hmm. palette, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this <laughs> would be great. Image. These would be great toys. I could see these as like really Monster cool lizards. little like uh, just the nat twos and little like toting lizards, like uh, iguana or whatever that is. Oh wow! That's pretty. <laughs> that's nice. I'd love to see. Oh wow! Try to play this. Okay, yeah. I don't even know. What's, if that's oh, popular. that's not even our. That, yeah, that's a. a alien key that's cool i like that that to me sells it it's like we're not gonna put treble or bass we're gonna put an alien key is thing. that isn't it i don't know what key that is i mean uh what do you call it key signature yeah, key signature. yeah. it's not that yeah that is oh, awesome that's just earth. one piece like that's a right. great like yeah it's a comic yeah very clearly yeah and that crazy guitar that's awesome yeah you know, uh, Alan Moore did V for Vendetta. In V for Vendetta, there is a song with musical notes oh, yeah. in there. But I, I probably need to look on YouTube to see someone play it. Because I don't know what it sounds like. But it'd be kind of fun to, like, listen to that song, uh, you know, being played uh, as you read those those sections. Because I think it's cool. When, when people add that kind of stuff, yeah. you always want to, like, okay, well, let's... What's the translation of that, or or what does that sound like? Because they're putting it in, they're putting the effort into creating that. It's kind of neat. Well, I like that a lot. This reminds me of that uh, Roger Dean we we're talking about. Yeah. Just you know, again the colors and these shapes. Alien landscapes yeah. with shapes. vibrant colors. Yeah. And this, this look almost for some reason it gives me like a photograph look to it. It's kind of. It's very yeah. cool. The highlights. Yeah. It's really neat. This is a trip. Huh. I'm telling you, man, there's <laughs> so much, like, stuff that I've forgotten that was in here. Just the word balloons. The green word balloons with just the way yeah. it's made. Very, very clearly, like, designed yeah. into work. I mean, work. this was done by a freaking hand. Yeah. You know, now we would make this a vector, you know, an illustrator, right? <laughs> and I would, and I would just not pop it up. Cool. No, that someone drew in those sharp. I mean, they made those things just right. It almost looks fit. like a brush, too, man. Wow. Brush are very thick. And it looks like they were paste. I mean, they must have been put be. on paste. Or, or like on a sheet of acetate. Or like you say, acetate. Yeah. That's probably what they did. I always think acetate because yeah. I feel like. But I don't know, yeah. man. Like, this is so intertwined into the actual artwork. Mm. Yeah, I guess you still could do that on an acetate. This is a, these are great. I love these. I love the shading on these. Yeah. So cool. I, this, this is, is awesome. True. This is... We'll I track down more out. of this artist. Yeah. What was his name? This one was not, we found somebody cool. Um, okay, let's look is, is it Al Tarf? No, because that, that translates to mushroom soup. Oh. So it's 46. <laughs> Francois Thomas. Yeah, I gotta, gotta find look, out more about this up, guy. Oh, here, here it is. Oh, there he is. Wow. 
Yeah, this guy is. Uh, you could see him doing album art. Oh, and yeah, and, uh, for sure. And he, he knows comics. Yeah, but, and a really yeah. unique take on him yeah. too. Like, not afraid to use white. Kind of hippies mushroom, you know that kind of a thing. Yeah, really neat. Huh. I'm intrigued by that potentially French guy. Okay. More Paul oh. Kirshner, the bus. bus. You know, one of my favorite comic strips. Yeah. And then this is interesting. What is that? It's an high ad for a rock and roll high school, school film the, the that album? was starred or... the uh, Ramones. Yeah, that's a. Isn't that a song for the Ramones? Or it, it, it's an, it's a movie. They're, like they oh. made they made a movie in the seventies called Rock and Roll or early. Well, it had to be right at this point. Seventy. Huh. Uh, contains two new Ramones songs, Rock and Roll High School, and I want I want you around to us. Classic dance. Oh, so soundtrack just, to the movie. Add to the movie, yeah. yeah. So the soundtrack. By but Warner it's cool. Brothers. Like I dig the cartooning on here. Yeah. I don't remember ever seeing this? It's by uh, is that a name? Hol Holmstrom. Mm -mm. Jay Holmstrom. Hmm. Not familiar with that. Another prose piece. Yeah. That a world part between. Is interesting. Yeah. It's like a pre-transgender going on here in the '79. They knew what was going down. Something, man and woman. That's... Whoa. Hey, when were we talking about this? Yeah, Frank Bruner. Yeah. Who uh, did work on Doctor Strange right around this time, I think. I love these things. Yeah. I love these little, like, dudes. Um, Elric. Yeah. Who, I mean, Elric's been adapted many times in comics for him. Mm -hmm. Like epic features, the yeah. Craig Russell right, version right. of it, and yeah. then Walt Simonson did one pretty recently. Oh, did he? Yeah, like within the last ten years, I think. But this is this is an awesome take on it, and it's really cool seeing Frank Burner do painted stuff because usually I just I I just seen like his Doctor Strange stuff, which right. is just you know him doing. I don't even know if he inked himself. I can't remember if he did or not. And these pages are just like. Fully designed. Mm -hmm. He did. That was one of the cool things about his Doctor Strange, yeah, though. Is like, yeah, all the the, the so weird this, Doctor Strange dimensions. This, and he'd use that. This composition stuff, I totally want to learn yeah. because, you know, who's great at that is J.H. Williams, right? He, yeah. He's a guy who, you know, right now working a lot. I think DC mostly. Um, great sense of page composition. Yeah. And and my my is problem artist. is just figuring out like okay you could do something fun and silly with a wheel and stuff, but it's to make it work and to make it have sense in the story. Like why in the hell are we looking at you know what I mean? That to me is the hardest part. It's like okay, what is the element in this part of the story that requires a choo choo train tracks and the tracks are the panels or you know I mean what okay. is the thing? Yeah. Um, What's well, the motif you're going to use yeah. that's going to make sense? And, and Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I think when you work, like... But it also has to, like, it read. has to, like, flow yeah. to, you know, I mean, so this we page design is just insane. Like, just that aspect framed yeah. by this the, silhouetted these, figure these framed by this, the two faces incorporated in there, yeah. this weird serpent or dragon thing or whatever it is, yeah. demon thing. Mirror... Like maybe and, it, and but it does fit because the story is like this, you know, Elric's this yeah. sorcerer king. Yeah, He's, you know. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, we saw this from. Oh no! This is the continuing of that story. Yeah. I Continuing like the same issue. Yeah, I like this. I like this stuff a lot. Yeah, it's very much in the vein of yeah. of what mm -hmm. I would have considered European style. And that, right. Yeah. That that. Mobius, mm -hmm. Kaza, yeah, uh, Enki Bilal, right, like those guys. Yep. And speaking some of some more Mobius, yeah, airtight garage, which is the a weirdest. little different style. I feel like a little bit looser, a little bit thinner yeah. line, or I, something. I, I, a little I, bit more. I think this stuff is stream of consciousness kind of thing, where Whoa. he would just start off and then just kind of go. You know the the Michael Moorcock connection to the Airtight Garage? 
No. So Jerry Cornelius is this character in a Michael Moorcock book, part of the Eternal Champion series. Mm -hmm. So it's this like reincarnated hero figure that just keeps becoming reincarnated. Mm. Elric is part of that whole thing. Okay. So Michael Moorcock's whole universe is kind of built across this idea. So Jerry Cornelius is one of those characters and appeared in one of his novels. I can't remember now. And he he opened it up. He made it an open world. Mm. So he encouraged other authors and other writers to use that mm. world. So mm. this is Mo Mobius's initial take on it. Mm. I think later on, Michael Moorcock said, well, that, that shit doesn't have anything to do with what I wrote. But like, mm. that was the... That was the, uh, the the sort of seed for the idea. Hmm. And then Mobius obviously took it in this crazy dreamlike direction. I mean, because hmm. Airtight Garage is this rambling story yeah. that's just a, a lot of times nonsensical. Right. And just, it's very, it's very dreamlike. Yeah. I kind of like that. It's something probably freeing, too. For him yeah. to not have that structure, just to and, like and, have fun and maybe kind of play. Yeah, know? and at this so point, that. he's such a master illustrator that, like, just pulling, he's pulling stuff out of his subconscious and things like that. Like, you know, yeah. he, he, he's just going for it. And yeah. he's got the skill to pull it off at this point. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Hmm. I like that. Oh, More Roger there's Dean. a guy. Yeah. It's a weird one to pull out. And is this uh, Corbett? Or no, no this is... Uh, mm -hmm. I forgot who this guy is, too. This stuff... Where are we? This is Morcart? Is this the... No, no. Uh, what page are we on? Page, yeah, A2. This is Macedo. Oh, yeah. So I've Macedo. seen... He's appeared, but he's done... Um, his stuff... Previously, in previous issues, is black and white, hmm. like really thick, mm -hmm. chick stone kind of brush strokes mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. very finely rendered. This stuff hmm. looks Bisley esque to me in a certain way. Like how we were talking really? about it before, like you could still see the contour lines, like you like painted over. Like a Horley. Yeah, well, Horley, Alex Horley is yeah, like the same kind of kinda, vibe. Yeah, in, he's like a watered down Beasley. Yeah, I mean, I according know, to Bisley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> according yeah, to... Yeah, but I think those guys were friends. They had a they? similar Everybody? kind of rendering style, but they... Yeah. Uh, or who's I, that? I think who's they're it? distinct. Who's that other guy that does... Uh, is Glenn Fabry? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like... They're all kind oh, of yeah, school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Fabry Glenn Fabry those, those is... preacher covers. Yeah, I think Glenn you know. Fabry's the guy that Bisley is... is I, he called out one of those guys as being oh, like he? a total bite to him. Oh, did he? Yeah. Well, and some like I don't know if it was like wizard or oh well, or we in, know wizard is uh, all that yeah some other interview but yeah this stuff's awesome it's weird because his lettering reminds me of Corbin you know that reminds me just talking about biting quick uh, quick little side <laughs> we could do our classic uh, tangent um. Years ago, I was on a message board with Alex Maleev. You know him, Alex yeah, Maleev? Yes. Love his stuff. Yeah, it's great. At the time, he was doing Daredevil with Bendez. So yeah, he yeah. was like, I think, prime work. It was hot. Yeah. And people would ask him online, "How? what's your process? How are you doing it? He would never say. And it's super simple what he would do. There's a couple Photoshop tools he would use, you know, some effects he would do on photos. He'd go down to Hell's Kitchen or wherever in LA, take pictures of these backgrounds, these buildings, brownstones, what have you, and then digitally change them into basically comics, right? Yeah. And like a Fumetti. Yeah. Um, but he, we learn that now, but like back then, he would never, and he would keep those tools as secrets so that... There's a lot of... Uh, of worry that, hey, I don't want Joe, this young Joe Blow kid to do it because one, he'll undercut me by my prices because he'll work for Marvel... Yeah. Ten dollars cheaper a page, whatever. Yeah. And you know what I mean? So those are things that I've learned through my effort. You don't get to have them. Yeah. And I think some artists are like, they'll show you what they do. Yeah. And some are like, This is kind of my world. Yeah. I don't show you. Go. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I I've experienced that on different levels. When I first yeah. started uh, learning how to uh, program websites and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I worked at a, a small company, and there were people who were like very much like you to ask them other programmers and stuff who were more experienced, who would not share their knowledge. I mean, maybe for like, that precise reason. For like code? Like they wouldn't show you how Yeah, code. like, you know, you would st- have them like, you know, well, th- you know, I was a junior level right, right. web designer at that right. point, and I'd be like, hey, do you know how to do this? Like, right. they, they were supposed to be there as a resource, and they and would they just, help they wouldn't help. And See that? I, I, I've seen that. <clears throat> I've seen that with other artists and stuff like that. I'm never, ever like, or even musicians do that too. Like, yeah. you know. Really? Uh, never heard of that. Certain, I mean, you get all kinds, and then you get people who are more than happy to like share stuff. I, I mean, I, I'm fortunate enough that I I get to do stuff that I that I love. Yeah. Like you know, I spend I spend my day doing graphic design, playing my 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 bass or my guitar, uh, drawing when I get enough time to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, reading and I think that all all that stuff feeds onto itself. So I love sharing that stuff. Yeah, I love sharing, you know. And if you can get it, if you can get it and you can understand it, wh- whatever like knowledge I can, meager knowledge that I can like help somebody with, yeah. then you, then you deserve to like, go and make your own bones with it. You know what I mean? And if. If I'm not bringing something unique to the table as somebody that could solve problems, either, either, you know, uh, whatever, in whatever design project that I'm working on, whether it be like, you know, programming related, you know, UI related or actual, you know, uh, design related, then what's my worth? My worth is bringing my own unique blend of all my experience into the, to the table. And that's, you know, if somebody could do me better than me, then you deserve to do whatever. That you right. know, right. I, I think that's you know, artists are insecure. Like some artists are more than others. You know, we can be insecure about our work. We could be, you know, well, like well, it was it, it's insecurity, but it's also like insecurity of like the the job market or the ability to keep going. You yeah. Know what I mean? So it's, so it's like. It's and I think and I like Malib. I actually met him years later, yeah. and he actually I gave him I showed him some of my work. I got some great advice on yeah. some of the things I was doing for Pariah, and so sweet guy from all yeah. of my knowledge. And I love his art. Yeah, I love it too. He, he, I don't care my, how he makes one it. One of my favorite. But back then, maybe it was this issue of hey man, this is my job. This is my livelihood, and I got to keep this. And y'all got to learn your way. Yeah. I learned my way. And I, I can respect that. So, you know, people have different kind of takes. Yeah, yeah. Now, if we worked in the same studio for the same company, trying to do the same thing, that's different. I think the guy who was not giving you code, that's BS. Yeah. I mean... I mean, because you're a team. It's different when you're like a potential competitor for going out for a job than like we work together. I mean, I guess that person yeah. saw me as a potential competitor too yeah. or whatever. But like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I yeah. think you do the, the 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 best job you can, and if somebody is mimicking you, then that's kind of a compliment in a way. It is, you know. I don't know if Neil Adams thought it was a compliment when everyone mimicked him, or John Byrne, or whoever. I don't know. But but maybe. I mean, but he, may, he, but they he, they're still working. They didn't lose. I mean, did they lose money? Came down to yeah. con- Continuity yeah. Studios and showed yeah. him his portfolio, and yeah. and you know. He called up the story. As the story right. goes, he yeah. called up whoever the editor was at Marvel at the yeah. time and said, hey, give this kid some work. Yeah. He draws just like me, but yeah. he's good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so it's just and, and, individuals, right? Yeah, and, I, and, and Neil Adams also comes from an illustration advertising art background where, where, where it is very it's, collaborative. Yeah, so that's he, true. he might have come from a different headspace too. Like, yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I wonder. Yeah. I think of people like Wally Wood, you know, but he died so young. I don't yeah. know his what his yeah. thoughts. But are this really stuff is is super great. cool. This yeah. is a this is a uh, I don't ever think I realize that M- M- Maketo or Macedo was the same artist 
because I love his pen and ink stuff. I think it's, it's some of the dark. Clean it. It's really dark. Yeah, but I love I that. That's I, that's I know, that's like also it. that 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 Bisley vibe that I'm getting for it. Mm. It's much cleaner than what Bisley would do. But I mean, I think the mm -hmm. color choices and some of the rendering reminds me of it. Bisley put splatter in there. This <laughs> is dead on like Richard Corbin sound oh, the, effect. I was lettering. about to say that looks that, like, looks, that looks like a Corbin art right yeah. there. Fascinating, and the coloring too. It's oh, great. Man. I got to figure that at this point, yeah. Corbin was another guy that was like massively oh, you influencing know all these artists. I mean, uh, you, sh you show one of those books to anybody who's reading comics now and they'll be like, oh shit. Yeah. Like, what is this? Like, like it's... Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's out of this world. I'm not entirely sure people even would appreciate this color work at this point because it, you can get... Somewhat similar results, like that airbrushing thing, you know, fell out of vogue, and also, like airbrushing and Photoshop has such a negative connotation that mm. that you really got to be willing to take a really close look at this and appreciate the craftsmanship that that that, that went into it. That well, this pre, I'm gonna airbrush the. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm that's gonna what, do it. Like I, would, I don't give a crap. I'm that's gonna, what I'm saying. If that's, it looks good, it looks good. But I but I know it, there are trends in art. Like in, yeah. there's trends, and some trends are like, hey, we don't do this and that. I mean, for me, you know, I'm not doing comics professionally. I mean, nobody reads my comics, but like I'm doing it, I'm doing it for my own enjoyment and and to also get the f away from the computer. I spend a lot of time on yeah. the computer during the day working. I don't want to also be tied to it while I'm doing uh, yeah. this no, hobby thing that I, I did. I was very happy to see that you were going to ink it. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I, I still like I can't get away from it. And, and to tell you the truth, it would fun. be way easier and probably cleaner looking if I did it digitally. But like I said, I'm doing this primarily for me. Yeah, I like this, this. Is, again. This, this guy Chantel Montier so reminds me of Tardy, and and like you said, the Hernandez the same school as Tardy, I would think. Yeah, it's got to be right. Gotta be. Yeah, it is. That, the, 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 this, that, that, that this right story there. in particular. Yeah. And I would definitely yeah, think that is. this is a translation it's choice gotta be. necessity because it's, gotta it's be. so poorly lettered in that respect. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Come on. Man. I mean, just straight up typewriter. Like, <laughs> you know. But I love these heads. I mean, very simple, like, as far as uh, economy of line. Economy of line, but, but still but, very but, distinct. But, yeah, but look at each of these guys. So different, different positions of the head, different angles, different people. I mean, very diverse, very well done. This is this is an interesting could have been a way. photo. Who knows? Or several photos yeah. and just composited, yeah. like looking you know, looking at the photo, photo just just for the yeah. just for the pose. Like, yeah. oh, I need this yeah. angle. I have yeah. these other po photos yeah. where like I'm a bunch hoping. of people sit, sitting together. I would think that's the way. That's the kind of way I would do it. I yeah. guess you know what I mean. Yeah. Sort of yeah. composite it and then like look at the reference. Yeah. But you know, it's not a slave to a reference. It doesn't look photorealistic in any kind of way. Mm -mm. Still super interesting line and, and style. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And then what is this little guy? Cover did this cover. This is uh That's amazing. Yeah. It's kind of trippy. It is back cover. Oh Valmir. Valmir. Yeah, it's this kind of reminded me of a much cleaner like Kent Williams. Uh, the bodies, yeah, like yeah. Uh, the poses yeah. and and the bodies, also yeah. the, the 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 color choices, like yeah, right, like he's very yeah. monochromatic with the with, with certain aspects. I like Kent Williams. A lot. Yeah, I do too. He's I, one like of, he's, he, I love his stuff. He, he's one of those guys that. Uh, I feel straddles that fine art line. Yeah. You know, he purposely. Oh, I definitely I think, put him I in the fine he, art you know, category. You know, for he's sure. not just a, you know, he's not an illustrator, commercial illustrator. He does, I mean, he can do, you know, a lot. Is, is Kent Williams like a contemporary or like a student of like George, somebody like George Pratt, who is also, I think. Oh, I don't know. Like in a similar kind of vein. Yeah. I put those guys. Or, like, I or put, even or a Muth, maybe. Yeah, John Muth, John Muth. Muth is. Amazing you know, too, like Moonshadow and some of that stuff. You yeah, did. I also put um, Ashley Woods painted stuff in that same kind of yeah. like. I, I, yeah. I look at like his painted stuff is like right bordering on fine art too. Yeah, like to me it's like abstract enough, 
to be almost punk rock, but there's so much skill under those where to put that line down, where to put that paint stroke down. Yeah. And, and yeah. almost kind of a minimalist approach. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you all for watching again the uh, channel. Appreciate it. Uh, hit that uh, bell icon to be notified. <laughs> Link, subscribe. And uh, what are your marching orders? No, we're not getting no. marching orders. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.